hard time finding protocols on it Mm -hmm. um, as far as the application because what I was extrapolating from the the various things that I was reading, okay, so you want the temperature to be about 15 degrees um, Celsius, which is about 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I was reading that... um, it's about a, a 10 or 15 minute immersion process. Mm-hmm. You don't want to go over 20. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, oh, that's so fascinating because within athletic training, we're talking about the application of ice or, you know, immersion in ice buckets and those types of things. And it's like a minimum of 20 minutes. So about 15 to 20 minutes out of every hour. And what um, was their protocol <clears throat> for the first one? Was it still icing or was it a different type of application? Which first one? Sorry. So for icing, like you're talking about athletic icing, oh, like uh-huh. putting athletic ice. Training. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the what was the ten or nothing over ten minutes? No, no, no. That was the cold immersion gotcha, therapy. Gotcha, so gotcha. they were so saying like that bath. Mm-hmm, gotcha. ice bath. Gotcha. So it's like um, a ten to fifteen minutes. And then okay. I had a hard time finding information on um, how frequently do you mm-hmm. do it because yeah. um, it, a, a lot of the the websites and the um, PDFs that I found and downloaded. They were talking about how um, you should only really do it after really strenuous workouts. Mm -hmm. So that's very subjective, I think, as far as what's strenuous, because what's strenuous to, let's say, you know, I don't know, you versus, I don't know, grandma, who's like, let's roll in. Or somebody who's older, then, you know, that's that's going to be a differentiating factor there. Um, so I found that challenging. Yeah. So uh, interesting. A couple of things. First off, I was the same with the protocols. I was like, it's interesting. You said, how, how cold did you say? 15 degrees? Uh, Celsius, uh, Celsius yeah. which is yeah. 59 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah. I, I found from a study mm. back in like, I think it was like 17 is when this was done. It was somewhere between literally, like I remember the numbers very specifically between 41 and 50 yep. degrees yep. Uh, Fahrenheit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So much different. Like so much mm-hmm. different. I mean, that's a, there's a big difference. Uh, the other part that you mentioned there about like, what, what is the protocol and what's it for and who does it benefit? What time? Almost all of these studies are done around very specifically performance enhancement. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but that wasn't what they were saying. What they're saying is recovery time mm-hmm. from workouts. Yes. Speeding up um, or uh, improving recovery time. Uh, in between strenuous, more yes. strenuous exercise sessions. And I think that is very limiting when we're looking at like, what are the benefits of cold immersion therapy? Because sure. I think there are, there are several and it doesn't necessarily have to be and about. W- and what modality are we using? Yeah. Recovery. Mm-hmm. Like what? So the bigger question is, is like, why? We'll, we'll come back to that. Um, but I, I was, I was challenged in the same, in the same way. The, the bottom line is there's just not a ton of research around this. I have my suspicions as to why. But like published research, mm-hmm. sure. there's a lot of anecdotal evidence and I don't want to take anything away from that because that can be really important. Yeah. So I think I was reading that, you know, as far as the randomized control research studies, it's very sparse at this point. Right. It's very um, new. Yeah. It's, it kind of goes back to like our foam rolling uh uh, episode where, where people were really getting on board with all, all kinds of stuff very early on, but the jury still hadn't been out yet. And I think it's still out, but there are a lot of things that I think we can surmise um, and be fairly confident about it. And, and we'll, I think we'll get and into I those. I think it takes time and talk. also, you know, subjective people getting in and out and actually doing these things. Three to hundred percent. Like yeah. the, the worlds of sports performance and health and wellness yep. need to come together on. Yep. And I think there's a lot of value somewhere in the middle of all for that. Sure. But I, I wonder about you, Jeff, kind of what was the, what were some of the things that came up for you? So when I was looking at uh, the cold immersion, uh, one really big right now is the cryogenic, right? And when I say cryogenic, I mean, you can literally call any icing cryogenic, but I'm talking about getting into a chamber where the skin is getting to a subthermal level and it enacts to the body that it's going into shock, right? And so that's how we- Through nitrogen gas. Exactly. So we use that. And then ice baths, people are going literally right after their hard workout into these ice baths. Um, I found a lot of research saying that one, if you want to do cryogenic or ice, it's usually before your workout, your hard workout. Interesting. If you do it afterwards, what are we doing? We're reducing the inflammation, which helps with the response of muscle growth. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, yeah that's recovery. a big one. And that one, I think we really need to, to, to dig into yeah. um, as part of this, because again, the question should always be like, why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. What is, the, what is the, the result that we're looking for? What is the goal? Yeah. So I got 
I got the same thing from it. Mm-hmm. And just kind of looking at that term inflammation. And again, people hear that word and they freak out a little bit. Inflammation is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Chronic inflammation yeah. mm-hmm. uh, caused by certain things can be very bad over time. For sure. um, but you know, inflammation is not a bad thing and is reducing it necessarily a good thing uh, depending on the why. It's almost like the ibuprofen that you take after you work out because your legs are sore. Right. Right. So yeah. we're, we're going to negate muscle growth through that. Yes, we may. Absolutely. Yeah, we yeah, may. And, re- and recovery, especially after if you sustain an injury. I mean, research has shown that over time, like you don't want to take ibuprofen or an anti-inflammatory for the first like 72 hours or even up to um, four or five days afterwards because your body has, that's part of your body's natural response to healing mm-hmm. and you're Im- impacting that, yep. you're impeding it. That's such a, a, a an important point, I think, to really kick this off with. And, and that is understanding again the why, but when we're looking at performance improvement or performance enhancement, increased or uh, sorry, improved recovery time, or we, we could call it like the decrease in yep. the time it takes you to recover in order to perform the next workout. Um, where does this fit in? So, I, we can kind of always, I love to come back to our compass, right? Mm-hmm. Sort of our roadmap of a, like, w- what is our goal, yeah. right? Is this an aesthetic goal? Is this a performance goal? Or is this like a health and wellness kind of longevity type goal? Why are we using cold immersion therapy? And we can define the cold immersion therapy as basically an ice bath, right? Yeah. Uh, and some cases that might just mean putting a limb like in an ice bath. Yes. I remember when I tore my ankle up <clears throat> um, as an athlete, uh, I was ice bathing quite consistently and that was like up to my knee. That's, that's not a whole body, uh, ice bath. That was very specific. It was very focused on a very specific area of my body. And it was, it was basically, again, everything from my knee down. Uh, so that's one way to, 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 to do it. And other ways that you're seeing out there now are these basically what they are or, are livestock troughs where they yeah. put water in for livestock. Yeah. They fill them up with ice and water. And then you get in effectively up to basically your ears yeah. uh, in this thing. And you submerge your, submerge your whole body. So that's one way. And I have done that as well in the training room. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the training room, is those um, huge gallon, 30-gallon trash uh, bins. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. So we had all different, depending <laughs> so on they the, turned into troughs now, yeah. right? But so it used funny. to be the barrel. Yeah. It's great yeah. that you bring that up because I've been in several training rooms, right? And, and it depended on the size, like in the funding that they had. Sure. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah, you could go out and like get a, a, a 30 gallon or 50 gallon drum, yep. right? Like you would put oil or toxic yeah. waste in for that matter, yeah. right? Like, and that could be filled, right? Yeah. That could look like that. It could look like one of these, uh, um, uh, uh, sorry, like I just mentioned okay. the troughs yeah. that people get it in. It like a hot tub. Like, yeah, there's, there's multiple. With a motor. Yeah. So that was the other part. Like you had uh, you had the ones and they were they were never long enough to actually get all the way in. They were short. <laughs> yeah, to bend Well, maybe knees. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to bend those knees. <laughs> so you could sit in it, you'd have to bend your knees, but there was basically, they ter- they called it a whirlpool, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and yeah. when you yeah. sat in there and they started up the motor and it was basically, yep. it was basically like the trolling motor you had yeah. on the back of your, <laughs> your yep. family raft or whatever you go fishing with. <laughs> There's been also I've seen and, and done all kinds of things, yeah. but to paint the picture, it's effectively that's what it is. If you haven't seen it, it's basically just a, a tub. You could even do it in an inflatable tub. There's and do it in your bathtub. That's problematic. Fucking my eyes. Nowadays, we're seeing we're seeing ways for people, and those things are, uh, you know, they they've they're, it's become a product now. Yes. Right? So there's again, that's probably why you're hearing and seeing a little bit more of it being pushed out there. There are benefits, obviously. We'll talk about those, but it's a product. So anytime anybody has something to sell, you're going to start to hear a lot more about it. So what you're seeing is those effectively those drums. Now they're they're it's plastic. The white one, right? It looks like a wine yeah. barrel or a, um, like a keg, if yep. you will, a big large keg that with the top on it. You can leave it out on your porch, right? The while the product may be semi-expensive to get. Once you have it, oh. it's very easy to, to use, right? All you're talking about is cost of water and yeah. ice. Yeah. Uh, depending on where you live, logistically, you might not have to put and much have ice in it. the ones that will keep you at, you know, whatever degrees you They're want refrigerated. From, from 35 to 45. And that's where you're getting into six to 12 grand. But I mean, there's all these different products, yeah. right? So there's a huge market for this. Um, but go back to what you were saying, Jeff, with regard to the cryo. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to kind of compare and contrast the two. Well, yes. why would I want an, uh, a water immersion That's a great question, dude. versus, yeah, the, the, the cryo or the nitrogen gas? For me, when I get into an ice bath, um, that's more mental. 
Like I'm really breathing. Like it, it it's absolutely it's a completely <laughs> different aspect than getting into a cryo machine where the nitrogen gas is literally tricking your body to thinking that you're in a subthermal to activate this response, mm-hmm. right? When you're in the ice bath, it does the same thing, but it isn't. It's much more immediate. So it, it, the, the cold is much more immediate. You are you're there. You're immersed. You're. For me, that's more of a mental meditation breathing thing. When I'm going into cryo, um, I have a real issue. So I kind of look at it a little different. If I have light inflammation, I'm going to do an ice bath in my home and I'm going to work on breathing meditation, kind of getting set in the ice without me like being like, I need to get out of here. This is a whole aspect of the therapy itself. For sure. And you're and using it to how you need to based on training, what I want to do that day, mental Goals. versus physical. Goals Dude, every day. So the reason it takes, and the other part of it is, is it takes longer for your body to begin to cool, yes. right? From external to internal yes. in the cryo chamber versus the, the water mm-hmm. because the water molecules are so much smaller than the gas molecules. Yes. And so far there's more surface area being covered um, on the skin through the water, through mm-hmm. the fluid rather than the gas. Yeah, yeah. So if remember back to physical science class and you're talking about liquids and gases mm-hmm. and vapors, yep. that's effectively what we're, what we're dealing yeah, with here. Absolutely. And so those water molecules are much more dense and they're much more are, uh, packed closer together. They yep. cover more surface area. And so you're going to get on, it's going to hit you faster. Yeah, immediately. Um, immediately. You're also going to get the barometric pressure difference too, as far as with the water versus the gas. That's, so that's yeah. going to impact you physiologically different. Yeah. And I think people should understand that. And the other part mm-hmm. of it is, is we, I mentioned this before, going back to the, the products, like particularly like these barrels that people are using to jump in, which are relatively inexpensive, yeah. right? I mean, when you, you think about Home cost Depot of product, shipping, want. all that, yeah. yeah. Whatever you decide to you buy use. Buy a flower bed if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can, you can easily have one of these in your yard or your yeah. garage or wherever you have some overflow space because the water is generally going to come out of there. You're going to have to continually fill it up. The point of that is, is getting in a cryo chamber costs a lot of money. Yes. Uh, It costs a lot of money to run one of those. Costs a lot of money to get even permitting to have one of those on your site. You have to have- gas it properly. They don't even know how to use it. Yeah. There's all the the mechanicals. It's like having a swimming pool effectively, right? It's a bigger footprint. Yep. Um, That's good with the swimming pool. Right. So you have to constantly keep it. And and it has to be accessible to you. Yep. Now there's gyms that have put these in. There's chiropractic offices that have put these in. I'm not, not to take anything away from them, but I think what they're realizing is that probably wasn't a super great investment. Investment. It would have been better to pay a plumber so maybe to put in the top, the, 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 I'll play devil's advocate on that because for the gym that I went to, they added a $99. Oh no, I get un, it. Like unlimited. Yeah. And I think they got messed up on it for the nitrogen gas and how much they were doing. But man, I was going in before every session and just yeah. unlimited. When you look and you go to another place, but, $99, you're usually playing $70 a session, 70 to $80, $90 per session. Right. But that's right. no that's no different than the gym business in, in general. Absolutely. They, they, they don't expect don't, you to use it. Right. Exactly. So that's so, that, that and this they is they lost point. out on me. Eventually people are gonna cancel that <laughs> into sure. the membership, right? They're gonna pay to use the equipment. They're gonna go, I'm never using this yeah. shit and they're gonna cut it off. But the point of that is it is very expensive to get into yes. for a cryo uh, bed chamber, uh the gas that and the power that it takes they're to run They're about sixty those. to ninety grand. It's crazy. Yeah, there's the a lot, ones, and there's regulation the around it yeah. depending on where you live and, and whatnot. So those are those are kind of the differences between the two therapies. So again, now this people have found that the cold immersion or the water immersion therapy is is uh, is more accessible to them. So going back to goals um, when we're looking at this, and you just mentioned a couple of things, like Jeff, like what is it that I'm looking to get out of it for the day? Let's break this down a little bit because some people are looking for. Um, let's say a faster recovery time. And when we looking at faster recovery time, there's a few things that go into that. Things that come to my mind would be like, how sore am I and how quick or, or, and how, how quickly do I get sore and how fast does that soreness leave my body? Like delayed onset mu- muscle soreness. For sure. Where uh, are my calories at? Correct. Correct. So, and that there's a lot of things that go into recovery, right? But how, but I'm talking about the soreness piece, like how quick does it come and go? The other part is, is like how is getting proper, going back to that, is getting those nutrients into the system as quickly as possible so that I can start and finish this recovery process uh, as as fast and as efficiently as possible. Um, there's also, I, I think there's also a piece around like, we're going back to the word inflammation. Like 
inflammation is good, but too much isn't good. Where's mm-hmm. the line for me and how do I manage this process for me and what do I get out of it there? So let's talk about, let's talk about that specifically. And I'm going to turn this one to you, CC, and kind of going, <laughs> going back to icing mm-hmm. uh, and injury versus icing your entire body. Again, an immersion therapy where you're, you're, you're getting in up to your chin and your ears in an ice bath. And the, and in the context of both of those and kind of where, what icing does from an injury recovery perspective or treatment, let's not say recovery, let's say treatment versus cold immersion therapy and where we're going to take this conversation. Yep. So <clears throat> originally the whole idea behind ice with, with an injury was to create vasoconstriction to help eliminate or reduce, not eliminate, but to reduce swelling to the side of injury and help to, um, I think, generate or create um, more leukocytes in the area to help debris. Uh, pulling out the cytokines for right, the Right, uh, exactly. To debris, um, you know, the the metabolites and stuff like that that would develop in the area from injury. Um, and so, you know, the idea was to ice the side of injury for 15, 20 minutes, elevate it. And then maybe depending on the severity of the injury, add some light effleurage. So it's kind of like nice stroking massage upwards towards the heart to help. Yep. With lymphatic drainage. To push that fluid, push the fluid out, out of the injury area. Everyone because likes if there's a, nice a joint pressure. space. The swelling yeah. is generally what's causing a good deal of the pain. pain right. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Putting pressure on those uh, nociceptors. Right. So, um, and it's not systemic necessarily. So yes. systemic as in like with cold immersion mm-hmm. therapy, whereas with applying ice, you're applying it to just the one site. The, the, so, the so one maybe, joint, mm-hmm. the one limb, Maybe the muscle. you have an acute mm-hmm. injury in your <clears throat> elbow, wrist, instead of full body inflammation mm-hmm. from bad diet or whatever is going on with you. Yeah. And then the other thing with the icing is um, acting as a analgesic, right? Mm -hmm. So you get the numbing effect. Mm -hmm. So it's a distraction. Yep. It's a distraction. Foam roller. (laughs) And I know that there's been a lot of discussion in the athletic training world as far as, well, how much does the icing really create Mm -hmm. vasoconstriction? Because there's this whole theory going back and forth between, oh, um, depending on going from the acute to more subacute doing contrast baths. So going from ice <laughs> to If you've heat, ever seen a man get heat. in and out of the ocean and come out with his appendage smaller, I'm going to tell you right now, the uh, water. <laughs> so let's talk about that. Let's be real. <laughs> so, I mean, dude, come on. So, like, I've, see, I've experienced appendage? it. So Jeff, what, sand? My, sand? Yeah, my. Yeah. <laughs> Your foot? Yes. Jeff's, my, Jeff's my pinky sausage toe. fingers. I, yeah. I don't think that happens with women. <laughs> Does it? Uh, I don't know. Did it? Does it? I don't know. I don't know. This is one of those. <laughs> this is going. This, this is a day in time where yeah. I, that's pro, that, that could be defined probably we'll several different ways. Later. Uh, I love that you brought that up because uh, both of those those things. One, uh, the appendage piece, I think, is funny, but it also is is applicable to my example or what I'm about to say, specific to icing and uh, the actually the depth at which that cold reaches an injury. And this is what, you know, going back to icing. So anybody that's ever been injured, you know, gotten a black eye or fallen down and had some type of a contusion or or whatever, right? You grab a bag of ice. Hopefully what you're doing is you're insulating it at some level from your skin. So it's not directly on your skin or it's very controllable. (laughs) uh, So you're not damaging the skin, burning the skin, getting effectively frostbite. Uh, But there is a lot of question about like, depending on where that, that injury is, the depth of that injury, let's say it's a, a contusion to your, your quadricep for, 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 as an example, you take a infield <clears throat> bouncer right into your, into your quad, or you take a football helmet or a hockey stick or something to the, uh, you get chopped up pretty good. Depending on the depth of that injury, mm-hmm. the external cold pressure or cold application that you're getting from that ice might not even get yep. to the depth to vasoconstrict, that is, make those blood vessels smaller and make the muscle cells, those those long muscle cells that, that uh, we've talked about before on the show, smaller, mm-hmm. right? To then reduce the amount of uh, lymphatic drainage and things that are swelling, going and yeah. swelling uh, circulation that's going there. Because your body starts pumping fluid there right yeah. away. It's trying to, it's to tr- CC's point, it's trying to keep it heal alive, it, yeah. right? It's trying to put the, push the good stuff in, pull the bad stuff out. Right. Uh, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of question about like how, you know, based on the depth of the injury, uh, is that ice really even doing anything from a reduction of inflammation piece more to 
is it more of a distraction and it's numbing the nervous system, literally numbing the nervous mm-hmm. system, yeah. those not the, 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 the nociceptors gotcha. yeah, yeah, that yeah. are there, right? Uh, to so that you feel less pain. Mm-hmm. Not that you're less injured, not that you're even reducing inflammation, but you feel less pain, which allows you to then maybe go to more, more of an active recovery or an external active recovery type process like that effrage, which could be really which painful. We're trying to do, right? Which is what which we're trying to yeah. get to. Not that it's not helpful. Just not reducing inflammation at the exact site level of, we, mm-hmm. at, at the level we're yeah. talking about. That makes sense. Um, versus, and the other part is, is the longer you're holding it under ice, obviously that is very localized, and it's not. That's not that one uh, isolated site of the injury. That's not the only thing working, For right? Sure. On on, uh, uh, I guess the the word would. Or the term would be supplying, circulation. yeah, it's yes. supplying that area with circulation. The right. whole rest of the body is working there, uh, so uh, I, I think that's a good point. So going back to the shrinkage uh, <laughs> uh, comment, like you're talking about an appendix that you know it's yeah. it's not your quadricep. Yeah. I mean, you might think that it is, but let's be real. This thing wants to stay like, alive, right? It's, it's made and so it does what it does. But the the point of that is, is you're you're talking about much less mm-hmm. muscle, right? Much less depth. It doesn't have to get yep, down that far. Very... And again, it's being completely completely covered by the water or the fluid that you're mm-hmm. in being yep. the ocean or whatever, mm-hmm. the, the ice cold lake or the ice bath mm-hmm. that you're in. Um, and so that surface area is being covered as a whole and yep. your body is trying to do what it can to vasoconstrict and uh, stay warm, mm-hmm. right? That's, mm-hmm. that's the, the that's, organs. That's the idea. Organs. It's very surface area. That's why you see such a, a pull in and such a reaction there. So let's talk about, so let's move to then the uh, performance piece. So uh, so we talked about the injury piece, sorry. Let's talk about recovery and performance and what you, what the benefits may be from doing this, this uh, immersion therapy. Jeff, I'm just going to turn it over to you. So for me, um, if I'm looking at cryo, there's a couple things. Um, There's a lot of performance um, increases studies from doing cryo prior to lifting. Now, uh, pulling inflammation out or whatever, I've done this multiple times, and every time I have a phenomenal lift. I lift better. Um, my movement's better. It's uh, it's a very weird feeling. It's almost like it pulls all the inflammation out of your body and that you have a better lift. Um, for me, when I'm thinking about cold immersion therapy, I'm thinking about I'm using... And I sometimes use heat, right? But cold is to constrict and pull out all of the bad things, right? So we're trying to bring new blood in from heat and with ice, bring it out, constrict it. And then also that body is going to send blood flow there, right? So we're kind of getting a double healing system in that area. You're talking about pumping, like it's almost like a pumping. You go from cold to heat to cold I don't want to say rice, you know, all that. But yeah, there's times where I do use heat. Like if I have an injury, I'll use heat, I'll get movement in, and then I will ice to pull all that inflammation out. Because if you have inflammation, protein, cytokines there that are saying, hey, I want to keep blood here, and you put heat on it, Mm -hmm. it's going to send more blood there. You're going to have a worse inflammation response, right? So I'm, I do worse or just more. You're just more, gonna, yeah, you, more. You, theoretically, you might, you're getting an increase. You're not going to increase in pain, but you're going to have an increase in inflammation, which okay. could be good, could be bad. But what I like to do is get an increase in blood flow there mm-hmm. through heat. I move my joint, whatever it is, through a proper function, and then I ice it after immediately okay. um, to help pull everything out. And sometimes you can do a, a heat ice protocol to kind of do that pumping of bringing out blood. But if you're using ice, the body's going to try to send blood there Mm -hmm. regardless, right? Because it thinks the tissue's dying. Yeah. So we're talking about more from a movement perspective. I'm thinking not. So I'm thinking of it from a little bit different level. Like I'm trying to um, reduce inflammation again, reduce that soreness, put me in a a position to get back into Mm -hmm. the training room or get, sorry, get back onto the training floor on the field, the court or whatever, and perform at my, perform at my best. I want to talk about this vasoconstriction thing and, and, and where the benefits and Are you talking about high level athletes? I'm talking about any. I'm talking about anybody. Okay. I'm talking about anybody because some of some of us. I'm not a high level athlete, Me either. but uh, you know, I can still benefit by this stuff. I'm just looking at the. I'm just looking at the the vasoconstriction piece, and this That's is true. what I found interesting. I read some studies. Uh, there was one in particular where I think there was a total of somewhere between 30, 30 and forty males that there there were that these scientists were studying. I think it was a Dutch study. And what they were looking at was um, 
they they did some some measurements and they were talking about, and I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole, but they're talking about the brown fat mm-hmm. yeah. uh, availability, <laughs> right? Um, to use. To use wow. brown fat. Yep. So if we if we looked at this really quickly, we'll yep, talk about yep. white fat and yep. brown fat. Brown fat, think of the, like, even if you looked at uh, like a steak, for example, yep. like a like a, a ribeye type steak, you're going to have some fat in there that's it's going to feel very soft and yeah. very mushy. And then you'll have other fat on there that you'll see. It's like white marbled, like super. Uh, like if you were fat and dense. I was to punch you, you'd be like super soft. Solid. Yeah. If you had brown fat and I punch you, it'd be like you had a six pack with something else on the inside pushing back at Yeah. Me. So it's so the brown fat's a very easily broken, much more easily broken down. Mm-hmm. Fat. It's, le- it's less dense. It's packed less dense. The cells are packed less densely. More around the organ. And interestingly, when it's exposed to cold, mm. right? It actually produces a protein that then shuttles uh, branch chain amino acids, which we haven't really talked a lot about on the show before, but branch chain aminos being the quote unquote building blocks of proteins that your body ultimately breaks down protein into to then yep. rebuild its own protein. So when you eat the chicken, mm-hmm. right, that was the perfect combination of BCAAs yeah, yeah. and things. And 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 uh, they folded that protein over specific to work great for the chicken. But now your body has to take it basically dismantle Break the chicken down. and turn it into a uh, usable form for you. And part of that is, again, breaking it ultimately down yep. into these BCAAs, proteins, and then shuttling them into the system. Same so thing back, with carbohydrates. Back to cold and brown fat. So what they studied was is they're, they're, half of these guys had a high availability of brown fat, half of them didn't. Mm-hmm. All right, there's studies they can do in order to work this out. Don't call me on, I'm not a scientist. Uh, but what I found was interesting was those that had, uh, stick with me here, those that had <clears throat> A higher amount of brown fat, right? Mm-hmm. Again, the fat yeah. that you do that, that then produces a protein that then can shuttle these these branch chain aminos in had less branch chain aminos available to them after cold water water ther- therapy in the bloodstream. So it was inhibiting then recovery. Uh, stick with me. That's what I said. So I had to read it like three times. Uh, this study like three times. So then I went back and I looked, and then I kept reading, and it said those that had a higher amount of white fat, so less available this brown yep. fat. Yep had more branch chain aminos in the bloodstream. But here's the thing. Where did it transport to? That's exactly the, the right question. So what, what they found was those high brown fat people that had that protein that had less branch chain aminos in the, uh, in, in the bloodstream, bloodstream, what they found is that protein is responsible for shuttling those branch chain aminos into the cell to then mm-hmm. feed the mitochondria. Which mm-hmm. again, if you with remember growth. that with life growth. science is yep. as a kid, which is the powerhouse of the cell. Now you can't measure; they're, they're not measuring that. So yeah. the, the thing about recovery and branch chains and and DOMs and all that stuff is like, well, well we know a lot of shit. Mm. The collective we we don't know everything there is to know. But the basically the assumptions being made that that's where that stuff is going. Um, it is going from the bloodstream more effectively during cold water th- immersion mm-hmm. right, or cold uh, immersion therapy into the cell versus being stuck in, in, the in the bloodstream. And I think that's a big thing. When we first started, well, we had spectrum cell, right? We were doing intracellular blood testing to see what is going on in yep. your in your cells because the blood, it doesn't matter. Mm. If right. it's in your blood and it's not getting into the cells, it doesn't well, it, matter. Well, it could. It has implications, it could, but, we don't, but, but you, just because it's in your bloodstream doesn't so mean it's made do, it to the cell. So you do a level, blood yeah. test, right? And you see serum levels and then you do your intracellular test and you see that you're deficient, yep. but you have enough in your serum, right? Right. So there, yeah. So there's again, it's like is is what you're taking or onboarding. We talked about this in our supplements uh, conversation or, or podcast a little bit ago. Is what you're taking actually being absorbed, and then is it getting yes, transported? Exactly. So there's two things: a, is it even making it into the bloodstream, and then once it's in there, is it making it to the places cellularly that it needs to in order to originally take it? The same thing the happens place. with burning fat, by the way. Yeah. So, so it, just just to let everyone know, sometimes you burn fat, you put it in the bloodstream, and it comes right back. Yeah. To storage. So uh, a good point. So the whole the whole thing here with the recovery is is in the vasoconstriction is is vasoconstriction a good idea if you need to be shuttling nutrients into the cells? Like okay, maybe reducing again that local inflammation at some level. And there are questions about that. Mm-hmm. There are still questions about that. But at the same time, like. Okay, but what about that post-workout recovery 
BCAA protein carbohydrate concoction yep. that I spend so much time figuring out to be the right formula for me that I'm putting it, it, putting it in my, my anabolic window <laughs> and all that stuff. And then I go get in the cold bath yep. while that stuff is now entering my bloodstream, but it can't get to where it needs to go because I've constricted the blood vessels. Dude. Something to think about. Mm-hmm. And uh, these are questions that are out there that we don't have answers to, but something but to think about. It's just something to think about. Yeah. You know, like for sure. Absolutely. So we have this, this recovery piece and here's what we know, like what the, what the objective data or subjective data is, is telling us people report when they get in almost every case after doing a strenuous workout, right? They, uh, they feel better. Mm -hmm. They have less DOMS, right? And they are ready to go, uh, for the longer term, Mm -hmm. right? Here's an interesting point though. Going back to the protein synthesis piece, mm. uh, there have been studies done where effectively they'll put, again, a, a, this is almost always like college age males, right? Because yep. it's some university mm-hmm. that's getting yeah. charged to do this study. Uh, they've gone through like a heavy, I believe it was a cycling workout, heavy, heavy cycling workout, and they only cold treated one limb, <laughs> <laughs> right? They only cold treated one limb. And what they found was there was better protein synthesis in the untreated limb than in the cold treated -treated limb. No way. Yeah. So from a performance perspective, they also measured this, which is really hard. Like, I'm not sure I'm really bought into this. Like, how do you like measure performance? But, 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 but the, but the, the, and there's a lot of factors that go into this, but again, going with the protein synthesis, the only way to tell that is through a muscle biopsy, Mm -hmm. which means they actually have to go in. Oh, Ben Greenfield, call him and he loves that. (laughs) Take a piece of your tissue out deep, deep tissue out of, say your quads, if that's where they literally have you on a bike. Mm-hmm. pushing, and then they stab you, yep. mm-hmm. pull that muscle fiber out, look yep. at it, have you keep going. Yep. You are still going. It's they a core sample. Four, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's a core sample of your, of your very, muscles. Yeah. But what they found was the untreated legs were get, or had better protein synthesis, which could go back to what we were talking about with regard to the BCAA transportation through brown fat metabolism mm-hmm. and those kind of things. So I found that to be extraordinarily fascinating. Uh, fascinating. Yeah. And, um, but... Always going back to what I was saying before, people report, oh man, I just feel so much better. I'm ready to go. Um, I delayed onset, my, my DOMS, my delayed onset muscle soreness is reduced yeah. and I just feel better. Uh, okay. So, and now that now they're reporting because alongside of that, they're reporting, well, I'm sleeping better. Mm-hmm. I have better energy through the day. Mm-hmm. I have a better attitude mentally and physically. I think we need to spend some time For talking sure. about that and where that's coming from with regard to the benefits of cold therapy because not everybody's doing cold immersion therapy because right. they're trying to be less sore from their workouts. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right? Exactly. Yeah, I, yep. I, I did see um, some research talking about how it's really helped individuals with depression. Yep. Yeah, talk about that. Uh, just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, as far as, you know, dealing with the, um, the nervous system. So we have our central nervous system and then we have our autonomic nervous system and to, to make a little bit of a, a physiology discussion here. So our central nervous system is comprised of our brain and our spinal cord. And then our autonomic nervous system is comprised of our somatic nervous system. And then our, our, sorry, sorry, our peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, and within the peripheral nervous system is our somatic um, nervous system, and then our autonomic uh, nervous system. Within our autonomic autonomic nervous system, that's where we have our parasympathetic and our sympathetic nervous system. So our sympathetic nervous system is our fight or flight, where our parasympathetic nervous system is our rest and digest. That's Mm -hmm. where... Um, Makes our heart beat, you know, our exactly. lungs work. Right? It's, invo- it's you um, involuntary, it. right? You Unless have we're no your use. Wim Hof. Yeah, right. you you have no um, control over it. It's yeah. just it's just automatic. And so, um, where was I going with this? So parasympathetic, um, yeah. parasympathetic, and so down regulating the system, the ner- the nervous system. And um, you know, it was kind of fun because I was refreshing myself on some of the physiology, and it was talking about how. Um, with the down regulation, it's also stimulating the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve is one of 12 cranial nerves. Mm. And, um, the, the vagus nerve is cranial nerve number 10. And, Mm -hmm. um, it's the nerve that, um, at least in athletic training, when you go through a head, um, and neck assessment, 
one of the things that you have somebody do is can they swallow? And so it's the nerve that innervates the throat for swallowing, but then it also connects um, the brain to the heart and the lungs Diaphragm. and then to the thorax, mm-hmm. right? And to, so to your abdominal muscles. organs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. The muscles so and down the reg- So in short, down regulating. So working on stimulating um, the, the vagus nerve and then um, down regulating the body. Yeah. And so going back, anybody that's ever jumped into an ice cold pool, ocean, lake, or whatever, they know the moment you jump in, your heart rate changes mm-hmm. and your respiratory rate changes. Mm-hmm. There is a shock to the body, right? Yep. So for people that do this stuff on a regular basis, like, yeah, no shit. Tell me something I didn't already know, right? But and also the hormones that are released yes, as well. Fight or flight. Mm-hmm. Your fight or mm-hmm. flight system is immediately switched on. Right? Mm-hmm. Again, the parasympathetic is being impacted. But you're telling it to shut up. And you're That's so the you whole have, idea. working. You're having yep. to work um, on having to control that reaction. Mm-hmm. And how do you do that? Breathing. Through through breath work and activation and of mindset. the mindset. vagus yeah. nerve. Yeah, mindset and breath work is a great way to help down and regulate your system. And anybody that does and has practiced meditation, I'm terrible at it. And, and it's been very few times in my life where I've been able to get to a state where I really felt benefit from meditation because it's just very hard for yep. me to do. I've shared that before. But anybody that spends time doing that or has spent time doing that, particularly like in a yoga practice um, as as one or in some type of religious practice for that sure. matter, um, or spiritual, let's put it that way, I don't say religious, but spiritual practice, they've, they can they've, they can experience this huge down regulation and yeah. sense of calm and peace, right? They can um, almost do it on a whim. The guys that really, that really can do it. Two or that three it can breaths. take practice. So oh. I was just listening to this guy yeah. on this podcast at X Green Beret, and he was talking about how um, he wanted to be, I think, very aggressive and um, tried to meditate and work on his breathing for like 30 minutes. And so he went out and did it 30 minutes, and then he's like, he had to cut it back down to like two Five, minutes. Ten. Yeah, no, and yeah. then work his way yeah. up. Straight up. Because, and it took him like three years to be able to do yeah, that. Yeah, you're talking yeah. about, I think, no, I, I think, I think you're talking about two lamb. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. from Ronin and Tactics. But no, that's, um, Call of like, Duty seriously, that's that great. Stuff. Like, yeah. you start with five minutes and just trying to be like, any thought that comes in, boom, it's out the door. I'm back to... So this is, this is the, this is as much about performance, right? Yeah. And, and, and anesthetic training. For sure. Right. And, and health pushing and longevity yourself as, as well. anything. So let's get, let's continue down this path then. So you, once you jump in, you're immediately, you're immediately, your mind goes nuts. Like the first thing I it says, I got to get the fuck out of yeah, here. Right? Dude, this I got to go. Total this panic. Yeah. Because it's, Brain, you stop breathing. Oh, I mean, just, It's yeah. danger, right? Mm-hmm. It's danger zone. I will, uh, it's danger zone. Like if I stand here too long, the body knows I'm going to die. Yeah. Right. Like, so the, the first response is uh, elevate heart rate, yep. elevate go, respiratory go, go, rate, yeah. increase mm-hmm. circulation, get blood going, keep the yep. body warm. Right. Meanwhile, in your head, you have to fight this mentally and then physiologically you also have to fight this go no i need to relax i need to calm down Uh, i need to just continue to breathe and you literally have to block out everything else that's out there in order to get into the state and that goes back to the two minutes versus 30 minutes you're not gonna Mm -hmm. you can't make yourself meditate it's like practicing for life right exactly right so i think this is a this is where i'm going with this and uh i guess in just in a second but you jump in that water, things go crazy. Here's an here's a personal story. I, I, I was doing the uh, the Nissan Xterra uh, Western Regional uh, Triathlon Championship. It was up in Lake Tahoe. It used to be held there every September. I don't even know if it is anymore. It's like the end of. It was like the last weekend of September going into October. So in Tahoe, that's that's kind of a transitional time yep. in terms of the weather. Time. Yeah. So in the yeah. in the weather, it can be. It can be 80 degrees, 85 degrees it's one day. Season, though. It could be 40 yeah. the next day. Uh, we'd gone out there the day before. We always went up there a couple of days before to try to acclimate, right? Because you got your, your elevation, you're a little over 5,000 feet. We were coming from sea level. So that's a thing. What we know now is it takes about a week to really acclimate For to sure. that. But I used, I, I didn't, my, more my thing was I never sleep the first two nights I'm up at elevation. Like I have very, very broken sleep. Uh. My respiratory rate is off and I don't sleep well. So I wanted to make sure I was up there a couple of days early uh, every time when, when we, when we went to do this race so that I could acclimate there from a sleep perspective and try and 
try and get sleeping oxygen. Smart. Tr- try and get yeah. Trying to get my you know my shit together right. But also what we do is we go out, we pre ride the trail, pre run. Opposite know. of David Goggins with the myoplex yeah. and the uh, just taping of the feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't never just showed up. Yeah, dude. You, Not to this one. This race savage. Was, this race was big. So then we'd also go down and we'd go and get in the water. Mm. And so uh, we'd always pull on the wetsuits to to swim because. Where I was living in Southern California most of this time, we didn't need to swim in wetsuits most of the time. Yeah. It was for more of a comfort and a Lake flotation Tahoe, thing. Lake you need three, four, right? Yeah, it's a different <laughs> deal. But we get in like on the first day, no swimsuits or uh, no, uh, <laughs> no. Sorry, go back to huh? swimming. Yes. <laughs> no wetsuits. <Naked>. <laughs> sorry. So we just get in our swim trunks or whatever, and we, we'd swim a little bit, dude. You get in that water and you just be like, "What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> what am I doing?" So you know, I mean, we were practicing. We were swimming miles. Yeah. You know, miles and miles and miles every week. In these, in this particular uh, event, it was only a half mile to one mile swim. This yeah. was a uh, it was a modified Time event. Yeah. So it's more of a sprint, right? Yeah. I think this this particular one was a mile, but we'd go out and you'd swim. You get fifty meters out, and you know you'd just be trying to maintain, and you'd have to come up head full like, out, fully out of water because your body's just freaking out. Mm-hmm. Um, the point of that is, is then then the next day we put the wetsuits on, get a feel for that. Um, the first couple of days, the last event that I I went up there, those two days before the event, it was like beautiful day. It was like seventy five degrees on the high side um, during the afternoon, and that's when we were practicing. Well, we showed up the next day. The race started at eight. You get to the race at about 6, 6.30, getting all your shit out there. Oh, it was worse. <laughs> the outside air temperature was like 42 degrees. Damn. That's cold, yeah. right? When you come from yep, 75. Sure. Yeah. There were swells on the, this is a whole other thing, but the swells on the lake were over six feet high. Dude, I've never seen that. Yeah, Waves are like crashing that. on Tahoe. <laughs> but here's the thing. So our preparation had helped us to a certain extent, For like sure. from the cold mm-hmm. perspective. But a lot of people didn't expect how, hot, how cold it was going to be outside. The air temperature was cl- colder than the water temperature. Yep. The water temperature was in the 50s. It was like in 54. So the first thing you got to do, you got to get in there early a.m. and kind of try and acclimate and look, get your wetsuit wet, whatever. Other wow. people are standing on the shore, freezing their asses off, you know, huddled together, uh, waiting to the last minute That's before the they worst. have to get in the water. The, only a third of the field finished the swim and they did on that great. day. Only a third of, uh, uh, well, so that's the pe- all of the thing, so the but pe- it, they freaked the fuck out. So the people that, that finished, were they the ones that were waiting um, outside of the water to start or were they the ones in the water? No. The, because I have a similar story. Yeah, no, So I'm very curious. No, the people that were in the water, and again, you ha- you could only be in the water so long because they staged these For things, sure. right? That was a yeah, huge yeah, yeah. field, right? So they have to, you go in age groups or, or whatever. Yeah, whatever yeah. And, uh, no, I mean, a lot of them, this is a pro race. I mean, this is the Western Regional Championships where you went to Han- uh, to Hawaii on the big island to 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 race ultimately if you if you qualified at this race. Um, so people that so finished, a large groups. amount of people that finished were like the pro sponsored, mm-hmm. you know, athletes that finished. Were they in the water? They, they prior? Yeah, they were okay. definitely in the water gotcha. warming up gotcha. prior, or yeah. at least... The ones that I know podiums gotcha. and yeah, that yeah, were yeah. usually winning were. Uh, for the rest of us, like there were some of us that were and weren't. But I can't honestly answer that question because all I know, this is what, back to your, what you were kind of making a statement there about before how they did. This is what pissed me the fuck off. So I finished that swim, right? And I knew I would. As miserable it was, people were getting seasick out there. They were throwing up on themselves. And they <laughs> well, were having to be, I can't even they were literally being the pulled, they were like being that. pulled out of the water by the Coast Guard and <sighs> the sheriff's office boats and the lifeguards that were there mm-hmm. on the thing. They let, the, they let those fucking people start the bike ride before all of the, no. s- the, win- the swimmers that were finishing. You get pulled out, you're done. You're, you're done. done. You're done. You're done. Yeah, pi- you have you no idea how pissed I was. I, I would have been pissed too. So I don't know. I don't actually know the answer I to your gotcha. question, Cece. But anyway, uh-huh. going back to your 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 uh, your story. Oh, well, you know, I just from personal experience like you, um, when I did the St. George Ironman, it was the inaugural Ironman there. And the water was below 60 degrees. And at that time, I was like maybe 108, 110 pounds and definitely under 10% body fat. And I remember standing on the shore thinking, okay, do I get in or do I not get in? And um, I ended up getting in so I could acclimate. So because I know in cold water in the past, because uh, it swims up at an aquatic park, I would get in and I'd start freaking out and my heart rate would go up. I'd have a really hard time breathing. I wouldn't be able to get my face in. So I was like, okay, I need to, I need to get in the water and get acclimated. And I was so hypothermic. Like Mm -hmm. it was a 2.4 mile swim. And when I got out, I couldn't even take off my clothes. That's a 40 minute swim. Yeah. 
I think I did it in like 60 or not 60, 50 some minutes, mm -hmm. 2.4 miles long. And I couldn't even change my clothes. The people in the, the um, tent had to strip my wetsuit off and put my clothes on. Right. And I remember everything was blurry and I got on my fucking bike. Right. And I was having such gastrointestinal problems that day. I mean, it... And then it was like however many hundred and so many miles of, of riding and I was having a hard time getting my nu my nutrients in and stuff like that. It was fucking miserable. So I kind of wonder if I had stayed on shore, if I wouldn't have been it's as hypothermic. Cold, yeah. pro 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 I don't know. Probably not. It's probably more of what we were going to with that, which is training your body and mind to, be in that area. to relax and deal with the parasympathetic and the way it needs to deal with it. I actually got in another race, in an adventure race, got turned over in a kayak out. Actually, uh, was down in Malibu, the Malibu area. Mm. Not even that cold, but yeah, cold yeah. enough. It was yeah, yeah, low yeah. body fat. It was a it was a fall day or whatever. The wind was blowing. I passed out in the water from my hypothermia. <sighs> okay, I had to be pulled out by the Holy Coast Guard. They took me to the shore. Like it was. I woke up like, on the shore. Wow. Like I. I do you ever tell your mom and dad that story? Uh, yeah. I don't remember. But <laughs> but the point of it is, is your body is going to react whether you like yep. it or not, right? So yeah. going back to the breathing, the parasympathetic piece, and the dealing with the discomfort. So this is where I want to get into like the uh, the resilience piece mm. and, and what cold water training can do for you in terms of helping you through. You mentioned the studies they've been doing with people that have maybe PTS, mm -hmm. uh, depression, and dealing with uncomfortable situations. Just being a bitch, well, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, let's be, but let's be, let's be fair about this. Like once that anxiety gets to a certain level or that, uh, that depression gets to a certain level, you may feel completely out of control mm -hmm. because you don't know how to control it. Mm. Right. And so this cold water immersion is a great way to get inside or get outside, yep. however you want to look at it, your own head and sure. work through these breathing techniques and these meditation, active meditation techniques to sit there and be able to deal with the discomfort. Um, that's what I use it for. Let's be real. And that that's where I was going with this. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be about athletic performance and recovery. It can be as much about performance in life mm -hmm. and being resilient to tough things and yeah. things that happen to you. If you're that you, sore, you need else. to look at your nutrition. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. like, let's yeah. be real. But, you know, one of the, the studies that, or a couple of the studies that I was reading about with the cold water immersion therapy and um, physiologically the release of um, dopamine and norepinephrine mm -hmm. as far as having more energy and yep. um, having a calming effect and how um, that, you know, this stimulates the the nervous system to, to also then... Um, help regulate the cortisol release right. so, as well. Yeah, so having your fight or flight system being so, be, uh, stimulated in this yeah. way it can be extraordinarily helpful. So what you right? just because said, it, like it, if you did a pre-workout, right? Like what we're talking about, like all these studies pre-workout, right? You're releasing dopamine, cortisol, what do we want to do when we're working out? Workout, you're going to release cortisol, right? right? That's so the happy. that's the by the way, that's the hormone we're all chasing during the workout. Yeah. That's what that's what we're feeling at the end of the workout. It makes yeah. us feel fucking great, yeah. right? And it's it's just overstimulating that for too long mm -hmm. without yeah. allowing the proper recovery, sure. um, which be, which becomes a problem. Like if you're when, type A, you're coffee all the time. You're working out. Right, you're we're, stressed, we're, right? We're chronically overstimulating and pushing that button, uh, but you, that's. Again, goes back to your point. I'm glad you circled back to that, Jeff, and that having doing this cold water immersion therapy prior to workout could improve your performance, increase your performance, your sense of well being, your it has mine. your alertness, and that's what a lot of people are, again are reporting subjectively. Um, I can attest to that. Uh, getting into or out of whether it's helping my inflammation or not, if I feel better. I'm going to perform better. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep better. I'm going mm -hmm. to handle my day better. Yep. Yep. And more importantly, and this is, I'm going to go back to the resilience piece because it's such a big thing for me that I'm so passionate about is we need more resilient people on our planet, right? We need more resilient people uh, in our communities, in our, in our nation. We need our kids to be more resilient. Yep. And they are not resilient because they are not having to be faced with these hard things. They're not as resilient as maybe they were, we were. We've posted some stuff lately on our, and getting some, I mean, getting just, some interesting feedback about like, hey, you know, we used to have to run until we threw up, you know, a yeah, practice yeah. or, Liners. yeah, Dude, like, there was, there was having to endure really hard things. Cause at least there you have a, you have a comparison. I'm not saying it's When we everybody. lost hockey games. Dude, we skated until somebody threw up. Right. And when that person threw up, 
It was at least until two or three more threw up, yeah. and then that's when he called it. So, so I, I guess my point of this is, is, is like building that resiliency and being able to deal with the difficult situations. Resiliency, by definition, would be your ability to bounce back from yep, something exactly. hard. Yep. Quick. Right. So, whether it's the workout itself. Right. And we talked about vasoconstriction, BCAAs, mitochondria. There's a lot of stuff there, you know, reducing inflammation or whether you're, 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 you're increasing your, your ability to recover through proper mindset, through down regulation of the parasympathetic, parasympathetic system in order to feel better, rest better digest better, mm. utilize all the yeah, that, 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 going utilize that, that, that concoction yep. that yep. you built, you know, in a shaker after your, after yeah. your, uh, your workout or whatever. Those are the things that I'm talking about. And, and, and I think more people could benefit whether you work out or not. Like, do I want you to work to out? it's quantify that, right? Do I want you to work out? Absolutely. I want you to work out. I want you to exercise. I want you to do hard things. I want you to suffer. Yes. I don't want you to hurt, yes. but I want you to suffer mentally. I yep. want you to suffer physically so that you, you respect and understand what it's like to get to the other side and what, what your level or what the true meaning of what that level of hard is for you. And so in building resiliency in, in people and having to deal with these things, but also prepping them yeah. to not be as impacted by the hard thing when it comes. Like, it's like a client when you increase their weight and they're like, I can't do this. Yeah, you can. They pull it off the floor as many times as they did the weight before and you're like, Look at that. Right. So right. It, you, you're, you're prepping your mindset. You're prepping mm -hmm. your parasympathetic to handle the, the challenge. Yeah. I'm not even going to say struggle. I'm going yeah. to say challenge in a completely different kind of way. Yep. And I don't think that we can emphasize that enough when it comes to this practice of cold immersion therapy. Um, and I think that a lot of, and therapy is a broad term there because yes. it, it handles the physiological, yeah. you know, the psychological, the emotional. We've really touched on all of those things today. but. I think more people could could benefit by that. And and again, whether that's just getting in and turning on your your cold shower in the morning, yep. it doesn't have to be 40 to 50 or again 41 to 50 degrees as long as it's uncomfortable. Yep. And it and it creates that increased respiratory and rate, right? And increased you heart stay rate. Stay in there until you can breathe and relax. Right. Once you hit that moment, turn it off. It could be 10 seconds, 15 seconds, but breathe. Don't get out right. of it when you're <gasps> Right. right. Breathe. Get to that. Like, I feel relaxed. This is okay. I turn the water off and I leave. And I would, I would challenge people to think about that being the real reason you're doing it to start yes. rather than the inflammation, again, yeah. the BCAAs and the brown fat and the, and the mitochondria right? like, and, and all that stuff, because we're going to be splitting hairs there yep. in the end. I think, again, we, we go back to our eat squared plus E, that stress and sleep management piece uh, in terms of how we're taking care of our bodies and our parasympath parasympathetic systems, yeah. what we're doing to downregulate. Uh, those are that, those are often the, that's often the biggest missing For piece sure. or those two things are the, often the biggest missing piece between what's standing in the way of somebody performing well or just performing. Mm -hmm. um, and that just performing is on a fine line of, uh, starting to move backwards, right, and yeah. and and not being resilient. Uh, I know so. You guys seen a lot of like these guys going straight from sauna to the cold plunge, right, sure. and yeah. doing mm -hmm. and doing cycles back. I've done it. That, been, uh, this feels, has been I mean, an yeah. age this is, old. This goes. This is back. Nordic. This, this is, is prehistoric. Pools, exactly. Yeah. This is Nordic <laughs> dipping pools, dude. They've been doing this yeah. for years. Um, Some Viking shit. Exactly. Yeah. But just doing that in a sense of like, yeah, like you're talking about. Yes, it helps recover and do all of these things, but like. If I can get my mindset stronger and I can push myself stronger and I can get through the day and I can be more resilient in like daily conversations in my workouts and everything, I'm going to have a higher affinity to get through my workout, have a better workout than just like, oh, I would. I'm going to have a lot higher affinity just to get through life. Yeah, in, in general. <laughs> we want to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and those 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 benefits are literally immeasurable. So stop trying to yep. find a metric for it uh, because you're not going to find one. You no. can look at your Whoop. Yeah, you can look at your Apple Watch. You can look at your Fitbit. You can do all those I'm things. But you, shit. at the end of the day, it is going to be qualitative. Yep. And those are things you have to be self-aware of. And that self-awareness is going to come from getting past the distraction, getting into the uncomfortable so that mm -hmm. you can come out and find your comfort level again in order to go back and, and reflect. And, and so, you know, Again, lots of benefit from performance enhancement that, that can For be extracted sure. from 
cold immersion mm-hmm. therapy, yeah. uh, tons. I think there's a lot from a uh, from an injury recovery piece. Mm-hmm. Like we know there are benefits, yep. uh, de- and but it depends on who you are, what your injury is. Um, are and you then coming back and training properly afterwards? All right? yeah. so many things that go into that. Yep. But I, I, I honestly, for me, uh, in stepping away from from this conversation, would be I think the biggest thing comes in the the emotional, psychological, and resiliency pieces uh, that help that can that can help people benefit because I don't care how tough you are yeah. I don't care um, you know how many things you've been through and I also don't care how many things that you haven't been through or how depressed you are exactly. or whatever your PTS is Doesn't I mean matter. unless you've been you know, unless drowning is a thing for you in ice cold water obviously that could be <laughs> that could be problematic here but my point is is like even the the to your point, the, the toughest guys in, in in the world, you know, measurably the some of the toughest guys in the world yeah. from a physical perspective and a mental uh like resiliency perspective are challenged by this. Because your body breakdown. is going yeah. to react. Doesn't matter. Your body is gonna react. Yeah. So I think anybody can benefit from it. I I don't know. I can't really think of anybody that, that may not benefit unless what would there's be the a contraindication. There's a, con, there's a couple yeah. contraindications mm-hmm. and I, I we missed those at the beginning, but maybe mm-hmm. we maybe we just touch on those real quick. I like, think if if um, you're ch- challenged cardiovascularly, if you have a, heart a, a arrhythmia or something like that, yes, then shocking you would the system want to. probably not mm-hmm. a good vasoconstriction mm-hmm. probably not a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, from yeah. from a Western standpoint, if you have a I circulatory mean, con- condition, <laughs> like if you have diabetes and yeah. you're about to lose your leg, yeah. getting in and reducing <laughs> circulation to that area may not. I mean, be a dude, good and idea. I can also be, play devil's advocate because we know blood's going to come back there even stronger, right? Because the things is dying that already has less blood flow. I, I mean, depends. like you know what I mean? Like, exactly. Like, we, Depends. It's, it's hard to tell, right? Like, but most people, most healthy, healthy individuals, most generally healthy, and again, that's a broad, that's a this, really broad statement in today's mm-hmm. day and age. We just have a really sick and fat nation yep. that mm-hmm. we're dealing with right now. But I think most generally healthy people can really benefit totally through agree. cold immersion yep. therapy in one way or another. Yeah, help change my life. <laughs>